Influenza virus. The photograph at left shows a single influenza virus. Influenza viruses are responsible for the respiratory illness popularly named the flu. This illness is spread from person to person through the air by virus-infected water droplets that are sneezed or coughed up. Influenza generally occurs in local outbreaks. Outbreaks tend to occur in the winter months, spreading rapidly through places where many people congregate, such as schools, offices, and nursing homes. The typical case of influenza is characterized by fever, muscle aches, headache, loss of appetite, cough, and a runny nose. The illness typically resolves within a week and does not require any treatment beyond rest and fluids. Rarely, influenza will progress and infect the lungs themselves, causing a severe pneumonia that can be fatal even in young, healthy adults. Most deaths from influenza, however, occur in old people who develop bacterial pneumonia because the viral infection lowers their resistance to other infections. Influenza virus. There are three main types of influenza viruses, named type A, B, and C. The schematic illustration at left shows a single influenza virus. Among the most notable features are the little spikes, shown in white, that stick out from the viral surface. The exact nature of the spikes, glycoproteins, determines the type of the influenza virus. Immunity to influenza occurs when the immune system makes antibodies that bind to these glycoprotein surface spikes. Unfortunately, the type A and to a lesser extent type B influenza viruses are unstable with new versions appearing every year. When a new version appears, the antibodies still circulating in the body from the last bout of influenza will be less effective at eliminating the virus and the person may get ill once again. Occasionally, an influenza virus will appear that is so radically new that virtually no one is immune to it. When this occurs, the result is a worldwide flu outbreak called a pandemic. The respiratory lining. The photograph at left shows a portion of the lining of the upper respiratory tree. The lining consists of two main types of cells, goblet cells and ciliated cells. The goblet cells secrete a sticky mucus which coats the respiratory lining and traps foreign particles. The ciliated cells, shown in orange, have numerous tiny hairs, cilia, on their surfaces which continuously beat in unison. This action sweeps the sticky mucus with its trapped particles up and out of the lungs. Influenza viruses invade and ultimately destroy large numbers of the cells which line the respiratory tree. This of course impairs the function of the lining and causes people with influenza to cough. It also makes people more susceptible to other infections since they are less able to sweep out other potential invaders. Of note, cigarette smoking is also very toxic to the cells of the respiratory lining. This accounts for the chronic coughing and increased susceptibility to upper respiratory infections seen in smokers. The lungs. The lungs are a vital organ which enables the body to obtain oxygen from the air we breathe and to eliminate carbon dioxide. The structure of the lungs can be likened to a branching tree Starting with the trachea, windpipe, the respiratory tree branches initially to form two main bronchi, airwaves, that enter the right and left lungs. The main bronchi then branch again and again, first forming smaller bronchi and then even smaller bronchioles. At the end of the smallest bronchioles, there are tiny grape-like air sacs called alveoli. It is in the alveoli that oxygen comes into contact with the red blood cells that will carry it to all parts of the body. In the rare cases, when influenza goes on to cause pneumonia, the alveoli tend to fill up with water and cellular debris. This prevents the red blood cells from picking up oxygen and causes hypoxia. Hypoxia simply means low oxygen. This is the main problem for patients with pneumonia.